Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to the new Tactical and Strategic War and Strategy game, uh, Rule the Waves 3. This is episode number 17 of our Let's Play series, playing as Italy, and we are in the process of getting Italy ready for another war. This is, we aren't at war yet, but we're trying to get the fleet rebuilt and built back up to modern standards. And uh, this is from a live stream on my Twitch channel. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to my live streamy self and jump right back in where we left off after our last episode. We'll save some cash up while we're uh, getting ready to build these things. An eccentric scientist of doubtful repute <laughs> offers to sell us his latest invention and explosive shells for 1.2 million. One never knows. Okay. Go to the build screen. The Caesar class, and we'll build two. All right, so we are building two of these behemoths, and our budget doesn't look so pretty. Um, I want to get them underway though, like as soon as possible, because we are not in good shape. Like, if war were to break out now, we need those ships. They're going to take almost three years to build, so. We need them. We need them yesterday. Right. Warships finish working up. Turns out that Captain Persono of the armored cruiser Marco Polo, an above average skipper with a gunnery expert, his connections with the company producing our rangefinders has contributed materially to the efficiency of the equipment, but it has also seems has made a good deal of money out of the arrangement. What should we do about it? We cannot tolerate any hint of corruption. Have him dismissed from the Navy. Probably not great J street. I'm not sure if he had good intentions and it was all to the good of the service. I'm sure he had good intentions. The Navy should buy the company to make sure we can produce the best rangefinders in the world. Why is he retiring? Because he's rich? That seems like the best option, right? Plus gunnery research? Yay, central firing. Oh, now I have to do more rebuilds with central firing. <laughs> Damn it! Uh... Listen, when you're Italy and you don't have good technology, you have to you have to figure out ways to right, you got to figure out ways to to get the the budget in 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 good shape when you're Italy and you have no money. All right. Okay. So do we need to rebuild the Romas now too? If we go to open rebuild for design, all we did is central firing. Why does that add weight? What is going on with the weight on the ship? How does reducing the number of shells increase the weight? So Roma makes 20, 21 knots. Open design for rebuild makes 20 knots. I don't remember seeing anything saying it was slow. Maybe Zovac. I don't know. No, um, we actually, there was a revolution in Italy in the game last time I played. Um, okay, so if I reduce the turret top armor... So the Italian kingdom in this game has already had one revolution. All right. Um, open design for rebuild. Hmm. Turret top is two and a half. I can't reduce the belt. So in theory, if all I wanted to do was increase the central fight firing, that would only take three months, which would not be bad. Maybe that was the case. Maybe it made faster than the design speed. That might have been the case. So 
So I can't reduce the main battery armor or ammo without massively blowing up our timeline. I can reduce the secondary gun ammo. I'm hoping 115 8 inch guns is an eight, 8 inch shells is a lot. That seems like a lot. They do have a higher rate of fire, but. So three months at 686 to get the better range fire range is definitely worth it, I think. So we've got four battleships. These guys are going to rebuild with the newest one. This will prompt me to put new fire control on them anyway when they get closer. If we do the THG classes, they only have local firing anyway. So we could bump them to central firing. I mean, five inches frankly the THG class probably needs a bit more upgrades than I want to give them but their accuracy is pretty bad right now what if we reduce get rid of their torpedoes or at least some of them that's that's the plan we'll get rid of their torpedo tubes three months 500 I don't want to put too much money into the THGs because they got the negative two quality guns, but if war is coming, I'm going to need them. And getting more accurate gunnery is more important than having tor better, more torpedoes on the THG. Uh, replacing the guns is an option. Oh, and that oh, it increases cost, but not time. Didn't really save weight, but it did give us better secondary guns, which I'm all for. So we'll do that too. Design is not legal. Okay. So we're going to get the THGs in there too. Everything must rebuild now. Help design for rebuild. Oh wait, this is no, this is the Roma class, okay. Um Upgrade their guns. Central range firing. We'll do a Ford torpedo tube. I don't know. I don't know that torpedoes on my armored cruisers are that important. The whole fleet's basically getting rebuilt. We already did, the, did their guns. We just need better range fire finders on them. We did increase their ammo, I think. But I'll just take five rounds off each and that'll be fine. 12 months? Stupidly cheap, but 12 months. Oh, that's because I did this, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, wait. What did I do that now it's okay? Okay. Central firing. Got it. Why are there three firing control positions on a light cruiser? That seems like a lot. 
I mean, I don't care. Can I not rebuild them to the, uh, whoops. Oh no, you go down separate rebuild paths. Well, they're just going to have to stick it out then. Cause I'm not doing another, another design for that. Same for the police drone 1902. Okay, so my fleet and budget are blown up. Everybody's in the yard. Uh, we'll have to figure this out. All right, so let's halt. Actually, let's go to cost. Most expensive. And sit and halt. All right, so we'll do that. While all these guys are rebuilding. I think it's weird again. I think I already mentioned this. It's weird that the... Uh, Ships that are being re rebuilt don't affect shipyard space. That is certainly not accurate. One of the things Japan struggled with in the pre-World War II phase was maintaining their ships because they didn't have enough shipyards to build what they wanted to build while also upgrading and refitting existing ships. Oh, no, the invention of the eccentric scientists have turned out to be completely worthless. What a surprise. The steel industry wants a stronger Navy. They want to help convince the prime minister to increase naval expenditures. Mention the importance of a strong Navy and steel industry for national well-being. Tell them the Navy is not a tool for increasing their profits. Psh, this is Italy. I, if you can give me more money, I'll, I don't, I'll do anything. Anything. All right. Private shipbuilding expands our dockyards by 500 tons. Good job, boys. Three cruisers finished their reconstruction. A uh, major arms firm wants to sell ships to a South American country. This will be good for our arms industry, but risk leaking sensitive technology. Uh, last I checked, we are average tech. We are not above anyone. So a strong industry is a foundation of a strong Navy. Allow it. Sell them. Give me more money. As long as it doesn't increase... Uh, as long as it doesn't increase the... Tension or or unrest level in my country? Money is money. I can buy more tech with money, right? Okay, so the funds situation looks good. Let's go ahead and resume most of these ships. Maybe not quite. All right, we should have a bunch of ships finishing up in the next month. Yay, another thousand tons from private shipbuilding. Good job, boys. Panto finishes their reconstruction. Roma as well. Four cruisers. Uh, yep. We'll go one more month. Another ship completes their rebuild. There's been an internal upheaval in Greece. Austria-Hungary is apparently sending a force there to restore order. Send an ultimatum. Make them back down. You leave Greece alone. Austria-Hungary backs down, but relations are soured. Goddamn right. You back down because, yeah, we're so strong and mighty. We're the guarantors of peace. In my new galaxy. All right, finished reconstruction. The alliance between France and Japan has expired. Pneumatic recuperator. Okay. Periscope. I like how it's like six years into the submarine existing and they're like, oh yeah, there's this thing we can do. It's called a periscope. Okay, boys. All right. Most of our fleet is modern-ish. Got a couple of Cushion 1900s that we can't upgrade because they went down a dead end. Oh, so this is true for them too, right? 
Oh, no, they can do it. Okay, sweet. All right. Because they went down the 1902 path. Gotcha. Honestly, maybe we should just scrap these Kyodulios at this point. It's a problem. I don't have enough battleships. Like, they've got 13. I've got seven, and two of mine suck. Suck real bad. Maybe we should build some subs. What, what's the submarine situation look like? Most nations are not building them. Okay. Let's get these rebuilds taken care of. Recent improvements in productivity has boosted our industrial production. I don't know if that helps the budget or if it helps the shipyard capacity. Well, the company, well, apparently our relations to Spain are great. So, but I'd rather have tensions go up as long as it's not just with Spain. Oh, it's just with Spain. <laughs> okay. Hey, we got new gun technology. I can't upgrade the THGs because they've got negative two quality guns, but I can upgrade these guys. Oh, no, they have negative two also. Fudge. Well, so all I can do is upgrade the ships that are currently under construction. Blarg. Okay. A world cruise for our young cadets is planned. Newest and most powerful ships. That'll increase tensions and get us almost to war with Austria-Hungary. Hell yeah, brother. All right. Budget's good. So what am I doing here? I think what we should do is build some new armored cruisers. I don't think the tech has changed much since the Romeo class came out. Well, it's changed, but not... I don't know that it's changed meaningfully. See, I don't have I don't have level one guns. I already upgraded the five-inchers. Um, we could add the torpedoes back if we want. Alternatively, if we replace machinery, can I get it to 23 knots? Not really. I don't know that an extra knot on here would be worth it, so I guess we'll just build what we have. They're over four years old. Can I not build new ships of the rebuild? I'm confused here. These guys are new. But if I build a new ship, will it be of the rebuild? I don't understand. Oh, there it is. The Romeo 1901. Well, this is 1903, though. Maybe I can ask the UK for a loan. That'd be interesting if you could do that. Is this just when she was rebuilt? I assume the rebuild makes a new class because when we go to build ship... And show older designs. Or maybe that's just the one that went down the alternate path, I guess. So you can't build a new ship. Do you have to build the ship of the old class and then rebuild her still? Huh. I don't want to design a new armored cruiser class, though. That's weird. 
I shouldn't have to do that. Because designing a new armored cruiser class is going to take a lot of time. Well, that's an interesting design. <laughs> what the hell are these things? What are you maniacs doing? Is it, do we have dreadnought tech now? Can I, can I do dreadnought tech? Does not look like it. I can only do two main turrets for the battleship. What about the battle cruiser? What about that? What about what? What about that? Uh, looks like two also. So we're not going to do that. So we do armored cruiser. We'll do auto design. Hmm. That was weird. Why did that? Okay, now it's throwing on these second, these additional. All right, nine inch guns. Who says I've been building a non Italy ship? And I can't realistically do that many wing turrets. So let's drop two of them. Is this legal? Cannot have double wing turrets with long guns. Smaller than 50. I could do this. So rate of fire penalty. Why would I have a narrow belt? Don't do that, crazy maniacs. That's what the Spanish did with their armored cruisers, and they were terrible. Terrible! All right, so seven-inch guns on a cruiser seems nuts, even if they're in casemates. But I'm getting penalized for rate of fire if I have less than nine inch guns, which I don't understand. But if I go up to nine, I don't think I can do that. You can't have double wing turrets with two guns. Really doesn't want me to have turrets on the uh, secondary guns there. Uh, I guess we'll do the wing turrets as it originally said then. Oops. Okay. Don't worry, we'll figure the weight out later. So, nine inch guns, a broadside of six of them, because we've got the weird wing turrets. Cramped accommodations. I don't want it to be cramped. It's going to basically be a battle cruiser at this rate. What's the, do we have any immunity zone? 4,000 to 10,000 yards. So close in, they are not immune. Their armor is going to suck. What is the gun penetrate at? I'm assuming their enemy is going to mostly have 8-inch guns on their cruisers, which means if we have 5 inches, we're safe until 2,000 yards. We could do 8-inchers, but then we get all these rate of fire penalties, which I don't quite understand. 
if I put these five inches in casemates, we don't have any penalties there either. But it feels like Yeah, I haven't actually seen much about their chip designs. But yeah, there's a whole bunch of intelligence report stuff. Did I just close that? Chip design? Lovely. Ooh, it looks pretty now. With the teak decks. Uh, we could just go with a heavier secondary battery. That's an option. Seven inch guns and, tur and double turrets. That might actually be better. I like that better. It's like a semi dreadnought, but for an armored cruiser. So seven inch guns or quality zero six inch guns on the wings. Ah, look at the weight. Um, What are current armored cruisers? What's their tonnage? 12,300. So it's only right and normal that the tonnage on this would at least be slightly larger. So we'll say 13,000 tons. Those guns are starting to look awfully small on that big of a hull. Belt 5.5. Five. They're almost as expensive as my, they're, well, they're from a monthly build cost. They're almost as expensive as my battleships. At 23 ninth knots though, they're nice and quick. I could drop them to be 22 with a Romeo class. That would save me a bit of weight and then I could actually shrink the ship a bit. Conning tower doesn't need to be seven. Six and a half is more than enough. Six is enough. Right? Like the immunity zone on a nine inch shell, six is inside a thousand yards. So we've got 12 6-inch guns and double turrets. We've got four 9-inch guns and double turrets. No torpedoes. 22 knots. I'll make it 23. 22. 22 knots. A little bit smaller than the other armored cruisers, but I kind of like this design. A little bit cheaper. They're about two years to build. I've got 100 tons of weight remaining. Is that enough for another? No. Increase ammunition. We could have added torpedoes back, but... Okay. I think we'll go with this class. Um, hmm. what do 
we do class name wise? What should we call it? Let's call it the Marcus Aurelius class. I don't know how I feel about this class. I like it and I don't. I guess we'll see. Oh, 40, wait, what? Suitable training cancel. What size do they have to be? Because they're in double turrets, right? So 20 at that, 40 at that. Can I make nine inch gun secondaries? Probably not. Suitable training gear. I don't have any suitable training gear for cruiser turrets. So six will be a rate of fire mount by negative 40. Seven will be a negative 20. Charcoal class. Is charcoal even around? We could name one after him. Um, hmm. I guess we'll just increase the caliber to seven because that gets my rate of fire penalty m penalty down a little bit. And we'll have it be 13.2. It's a little more pricey than I wanted. But, uh, you know, they sh they're sure going to pack a punch. You know what? Hell, if we're gonna go, if we're gonna go expensive, we might just go well go expensive. Let's add some torpedoes. All right, so thirteen three. She's a thousand tons heavier than the Roma class. She's the same speed as the Roma class. A lot more firepower than the Roma class, and she's bigger. So there you go. Design will take three months, by which time our finances will be even better. We're almost at war with Austria-Hungary. Four cruisers finish rebuilds. Um, you know, let's also build more of those monolith-class destroyers. Let's build 10 of the things, or maybe 12. So that'll give us 37 destroyers. Austria-Hungary is 44 when they're done. More cruisers have finished their rebuilds. Did I, by the way, did I actually, these are 1903. All right, so they do have the central fire. Gotcha. Did I not rebuild the Polistros? I thought I did. Three months at four oh eight, whatever. There's no upper or extended belt on these things. Yikes. It could be Mare Beast. I I had a little bit of that in one of my victories earlier, but we lost so many ships. 
right, central firing, save and upgrade. Yeah, we'll do that. I want the better fire control. I need the better fire control. Oh, my battleship should have it. It's Roma class also. Yeah. Okay. Um, and destroyers just have local firing, right? All right, so frankly, the Cayodulios are going to be a liability. We might just be better off scrapping the damn things. Huh, so the THG class's engines are getting worse, so they're getting slower? That's not good. The rebuild didn't help. I'm guessing if I were to replace the machinery, it would. Um, okay. Yeah, let's move forward to the next month. Austria-Hungary appears considering a naval rearmament program. Really? Their Navy's already bigger than ours. Uh, condemn the adventurous policies of them. Yes. Wartime, boys. Tensions between our ally and Russia and Japan are high. Let's defuse the situation. I don't need to go to war with Japan at the same time, do I? Or do we encourage Russia to take a hard line? Encourage Russia to take a hard line. We'll see what happens. All right. The Marcus Aurelius is ready for construction. We will build two of them at first. They will take just over two years. So if the war is continuing, then they'll be ready. But it's good that we're starting them now. Uh, let's get the whole fleet active and ready. Interesting, I can build two of those and not be massively in debt yet. Hmm. Well, also, given that the Marcus Aurelius class has the Marcus Aurelius in it, we should probably rename one of them after his son, right? Commodus, the Commodus. All right, so let's also lay two more Marcus Aureliuses down then, since it looks like our naval budget is skyrocketing which is not helping unrest, but. Right, so we're building two new battleships and four new armored cruisers. We'll name one the Nerva and one I feel like Trajan should get his own class of ships eventually. But we're naming our, our cruisers after Roman emperors. There's enough of them. The poor Caesars won't be ready for this war. That's not necessarily true, J Street. We uh, had a like four-year-long war against France before, remember? But we're getting our ships back into into readiness. A lot of poor crews got to shake off the rust. We got a little bit of surplus here. One of the cruisers ran aground ashore of a minor nation while I'm performing an intelligence operation. This will hurt prestige with everybody. Sincerest apologies. I don't need to make the rest of the world hate me. Hey, we can build dreadnoughts now. Enables main battery wing turrets with caliber larger than 10 inches. How are we not at war with Austria-Hungary? I saw this happen before. Our tension just sat up above that amount for a long time. 
They scrapped one of their older battleships. Okay. I'm okay with that. Let me get my rebuild ships in. All right. Private ship building is expanding our Mac Docsaris. Two cruisers have finished their reconstruction. You're due to hold a speech at the annual gathering of the Navy League. What is the gist of your speech? The sea should be kept peaceful for the prosperity of all. We are prepared to safeguard the interest of our nation. The freedom of the seas is threatened by the imperialistic ambitions of Austria-Hungary. War! <laughs> well, the naval secretary said some offensive things, and now we're at war. Okay. Yay! He did it! He started the war! We didn't kill any princes, as far as I'm aware. All right, so let's get our Corvettes into trade protection role. We also need to put six of our crappier destroyers in that role. Okay, so trade protection is up to 12. ASW is at 25. Maybe we should actually build some submarines, though. That's the thing. They have a few. They have seven, and they're building five. How do I build submarines? <laughs> um, do I actually... I don't design them, right? They just get built. Do I even have the ability to build them? Oh, build sub. <laughs> Coastal submarine. They're cheap. They do take a little while to build, 16 months. Woof. We'll build 12. Can we accelerate them? No. All right. Well, we got 12 SSCs that we're building as well. Assuming that plays into what our shipyards can support. This is like the closest I've been to maximizing my shipyard utilization. All right, we've got enough money to build what we're building for one turn, and then we'll have three rebuilds complete next turn. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out then. Why haven't I been spamming out SSCs? Because, I don't know. Because. We're behind in tech, but so is Austria-Hungary. Actually, everybody's behind except for Great Britain. Who, who wants to bet they're, they're building two dreadnoughts? Those bastards. They're doing it. They're doing it. The Hercules. Is this the year that they're expected to be completed? So the first dreadnought looks like it's going to come in the uh, 1907 time frame. Okay. Austria-Hungary. What do we see here? Type of ship. They are not building any dreadnoughts yet. They're building one battleship, which will be done in 1906. The, the majority of their battleship fleet is from the first war. Jeez. That should work out well for us. The Cayodulios might actually serve a purpose. You can only look at the design if you know the actual, if you have intel on the design, which I do not believe I have for the British. All right, we are going to go to war against Austria-Hungary. The war has already started, and hopefully we will beat them and get our revenge against them for the previous conflicts. Uh, but we're not going to do that today. We're already 45 minutes into this thing, and uh, it's just we're probably going to get hit with a battle right away. So we'll go ahead and we'll pick this up in our next episode. Until our next episode, though, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'm out.